Thank you so much, Pastor Mike. Uh, can we just welcome Peter? A uh, big caribou welcome. We're so blessed to have you this morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Peter, he runs Mercy Care, a partner, a longtime partner of ours in Malawi. Um, and so, Peter, first, can, can you just maybe introduce yourself to, to the folks who are, are new to Caribou? Good morning, church. Uh, I'm from Malawi. I hope most of you, you know where Malawi is. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Malawi is just your neighbor. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so Malawi is in southern part of Mala uh, Africa. It's a small country, uh, landlocked, and uh, uh, it's one of the poorest countries in the world. Uh, apart from being the poorest country, but Malawi is also called the warm part of Africa because of the people. They are so loving, they are so warm, they are so welcome. Uh, so I've been doing uh, ministry in Malawi. I was born there, grew up there, and uh, over the past uh, 15 years, I've managed to build two high schools that we are helping hundreds of kids to get quality education. In Malawi, one of the biggest challenges is education. A lot of people, they don't know how to read and write. So we are trying uh, to help these kids get education. And all our schools are Christian uh, schools. Oh, so good. There's there's over, and correct me if I'm wrong, but there's about 400 kids in each school. Yes. Right? Wow. And there's 200 kids in addition to that in the after, after, after school programs. Wow. Yeah. So there's, there's over a thousand kids daily being helped uh, by, by the ministry that, that God is working through Peter. So it's just amazing stuff. And we're honored uh, to be able to partner with you. But we know you don't do it alone. You have a family back home in Malawi as well. Can you? Yes. Uh, uh, I'm married to Tabitha. And we have two, two kids, Miguel, who is 10, and Micah, today has just turned uh, six. So, so today it's uh, wow. Micah's birthday. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hope they are watching me. Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday to Micah. <laughs> wow, six years old. I'm yeah. Patrick, I'm so good. <laughs> I think we have to do it. We, we stole you on Micah's birthday. We stole his dad. So I, I think if we take a moment, we're going to sing a happy birthday to him. Uh, let's do it together. Ready? <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Micah. Happy birthday to you. Oh, so good. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Micah, we also got you a little present. And so if anybody would like to come and sign the card, I just think it'd be so fun if we had like 500 people <laughs> blessing him, praying for him, and wishing him a happy birthday. Feel Thank free to you. do that in the lobby afterwards. Um, Peter, lastly, we're doing for Mission Sunday, which also happens to be today. Everything is today. <laughs> uh, we're doing seven days of prayer from Malawi. And so you sent me these prayer points. Yes. Um, and together as a church over the next week at 12, Every single day, we're going to be praying together on Zoom. So you can grab one of these wherever you're at. It'll just be 10 to 15 minutes at 12 p.m., and we're going to pray into these different themes. There's a little QR code there that'll take you right uh, to the Zoom link to where we'll be meeting each day. Um, and we're blessed to have you in, in house with us today, Peter. I know you'll be sharing a little bit more about Mercy Care at the lunch after the second service. But do you think you can just start us off on, on our week of prayer, uh, praying over peace and stability of the region and the gospel of Christ to continue to spread? Yes. Uh, let's pray. Thank you, dear Lord, for your message and for your grace upon our life. Lord Jesus, currently the world needs your presence in so many places, Lord. We need your peace across the globe, Lord Jesus, so that people can be able to share the gospel. People can be able, Lord Jesus, to know about you. We need your peace, God, which transcends all understanding, Lord Jesus, to be among us, your people. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus, because of your grace. Thank you so much because, Lord Jesus, you loved us and your love, Lord Jesus, we can be able to see it in our homes, in our, our places. May you all love and your peace, uh, which transcends all understanding, Lord, be among us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Peter. I'll get out of your way now. <laughs> okay. 
it's it's always good uh, to be here because I always forget my language. So my language is Chichewa, and uh, I have to think in my language, then translate it in English, then speak it to you. <laughs> is that cool? <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you, you have been going through the book of Romans, so if you have your Bibles, uh, could you please turn with me uh, to Romans chapter number 10. So, Paul has been uh, challenging these people. If you look in Ephesians chapter number 2, Paul has been telling the people uh, that salvation is only by faith through Christ Jesus. Paul has been preaching this. Paul has been telling this. If you go in Acts chapter number 31, Paul keeps telling them, you have to believe. Believe in Jesus. If you believe, you and your family, you'll be saved. Paul is coming to this chapter in Romans number 10, asking the, all these questions to the believers. So it's always very interesting. When I travel to North America, when I go to the restaurant, one of my challenges is to pick the meal. And I've always been challenged by those who serve when they start asking questions. If I order maybe an egg, they ask, fried or scrambled? Okay, I say, okay, fried. Medium done. All those questions. So it kind of like stresses me. And I tell, what I need is food. <laughs> if you come to Malawi, don't bother. They want you to ask questions. You just have to ask, what do you have? Usually, it's chicken and chips. So we are in this chapter number 10. Let's read together chapter number 10, where Paul is asking these questions. Verse number 14. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? How, and how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As, is, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. It's very interesting. Paul has been trying to tell these people, the Israelites, they are failing to believe. They have heard, they have known that salvation is only through faith in Jesus, but they try to save themselves. They thought doing good works, going, doing a lot of good works is what they got, uh, that will take them to heaven. So Paul is coming here to ask these questions. So today, by the end of this service, let me assure you, we're going to answer these questions. Because Paul is just asking them questions. He's not providing the solutions uh, to these people. So the first question that Paul is asking to them, he says... How then can they call on the one they have not believed? How then can they call on the one they have not believed? I remember a couple months ago, uh, my son Mike, who was turned uh, six, at the middle of the night, he screamed, Daddy! And I heard the voice. I shook my wife. Did you hear that? She said, what? Two minutes, Michael was in our bed. And he said, you know those stories when we are young, parents would tell us that there is a monster, is under your bed, all those stories. So that night, it was so a beautiful night in Malawi. When it's dark, it's dark. And uh, there's no light anywhere else. So that day, it was so bright, uh, we had a full moon. One of the things that if you come to Malawi, you can enjoy. It's a full moon and stars. 
and the sunset. It's so natural. So we, we had forgotten to close the window in Micah's bed, and the, the curtain, uh, we are making this shadow, because the, when the wind blows, the curtain could move. And because there was a full moon, the full moon made a certain image in, her, in his room. So when the wind blows, Micah could see something shaking. So he screamed, Daddy! He ran to our room. But why Micah called Daddy? He believed that if he calls me, he's going to be saved as a dad. He couldn't call mommy. I don't know why. <laughs> so Paul is coming here and ask this question. How then can they call on the one they have not believed? The same question comes to us. How can we call in the one we haven't believed? So when I was reading this chapter, I was trying like to collect Paul in my own thinking. Like why Paul, the first thing, the first question he's coming with is about belief. It's about belief. I think if we believe in something else, if you believe in me, if I tell you anything else, you're going to do it. But if you don't believe in me, or if I push you, you cannot. If I have a gun and point at you, if you don't believe that I cannot shoot, you not be scared. But Paul is saying, how can they call in the one they haven't believed? Who is that person? He's talking about Jesus. Have you believed in Jesus? Have you? That's Paul is telling the Israelites, the people, upon God's heart, they believed that in their own self-flashiness, they're going to go to heaven. Doing good works is perfect, but we have to believe, believing in Jesus, that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Look at the following, the next question that Paul is asking. It's very interesting. It's very interesting. And how, and how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? That's a very interesting question. Like your church has been supporting us for the past 10 years. But how did that come that your church can be working with us. It means somebody else heard about Malawi. Somebody else believed in the work that we do. And you take an action. Are we together, church? If you haven't heard about Jesus, it's very difficult to believe about him because you have never heard so Paul is trying to tell us this morning, it's our responsibility, it's our law to take the message to others of whom they haven't heard about him. Who is him? Jesus. Today you are in this church because you heard about Jesus. Somebody else shared the gospel with you and you believed when you believed, you take an action. So Paul say, how can they believe in somebody else they haven't heard about? That's the challenge that Paul is bringing in our life. So Paul is urging us to share the gospel, to share with others. We are all born sinners. Without taking an action, without believing in Jesus, without following Jesus, we are going to hell. And if you look around the world, there are so many opportunities to share God's word. Billions of people, they haven't heard about Jesus. Why, where are they going? 
There's only one way to heaven. There's only one way. And Paul is reminding us in this chapter number 10, verse uh, 14 and 15. So, Paul continues showing that uh, believing in Christ, uh, that's the only way. Paul keeps asking more questions uh, in this chapter, in this verse. And he said, how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? How can they believe in whom they have not heard? How can they hear? How can they hear? The question still comes to us. Paul is not providing answers. Paul is not telling us how to respond to this. But definitely, Paul is looking at you and me. It's our law. It's our responsibility. Because we cannot believe in something else that we have not heard. That's completely impossible. So, if Paul in this chapter is expressing the importance of sharing the gospel with other people, if we do not tell other people, they may never hear it. And if they do not hear it, they cannot be saved and they cannot believe. That's the message of Paul to us this morning. It's our law to share it. Because the Romans in this period, they thought that whatever they are doing, that's it. That's it. They are going uh, to heaven. But no, they are supposed to believe in Jesus. Once they believe in Jesus, they have to share. That's the power of the gospel. That's the importance of the gospel. We don't need just to keep it to ourselves. A story is told of this other young boy uh, who, whose dad was a, a pirate. So they were flying, and the plane was going through uh, turbulence. You know when you're in a, in a flight. I'm one of the people that usually get scared with the flights. Whenever it's shaking, I... Uh, hold tight the, the seat and close my eyes. So the plane was going through such kind of moments, but everybody else was so afraid in the flight, but the kid was just like comfortably sitting, smiling. After it has gone through the turbulence, the, uh, uh, the air hostess came to the kid like, why were you not afraid? He said, that's my dad flying the, the, the airplane. The son had so much hope, believe in the dad. Do we believe in Jesus? When life gets tough, where do you go to? Do you kneel to Jesus? Where is your source of hope? Today, Paul is challenging us to believe in Jesus. Believing is not just merely talking on our mouth. Believing is taking an action, knowing that God is in control. God who go through with us. Sometimes when we go through moments, challenging periods, we turn away from God during COVID. Some people, because we had to move everything else, some people have completely moved away from the church because COVID was so big to them than their God. Some, they lose their loved one, and that made them to move away from faith. But that's not the way we should do do as believers. Paul keeps asking questions. And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? Paul is just asking questions to us. And how can they hear without someone 
preaching to them. That's a great commission. That's a great commission. They can only hear if somebody else preach to them. They can only hear if somebody else disciple them. That's our law as believers. Paul's statement is encouraging us to go and preach the gospel. And that's our law that we should share. But if we go, who is supposed to go? Who is supposed to send these people? Uh, that's God sent his people to go and minister to his people. God has different means. God can use anything else if he wants to reach out to his people. But in this century, God has chosen his people to reach out to the people that he loved. That's you and me. That we can take the gospel to other people. If we have believed, if we have heard the gospel, it's our responsibility to reach out to others. I don't know where God is calling you. It could be here in the church. It could be your neighbors. I don't know. But sometimes it can be more uh, uh, threatening because we have a lot of excuses. If you see the conversion of Paul in Acts chapter 9, when Paul met Jesus face to face and he was converted, immediately God told Paul to meet Ananias. And Ananias had a lot of excuses. Because he had heard about Paul, that this is a brutal killer. If I meet him, he was going to kill me. And Ananias heard it. And sometimes we hear our call, where God is calling us, what God wants us to do, but we get threatened. We stop believing. We fail to believe in what God is telling us. I remember... 15 years ago, I got an opportunity to come to North America for the first time. Uh, I was young and uh, so anxious to see what America is. I was coming in a village. When we talk of a village, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is the place that there's no electricity, uh, dirty streets, uh, if you, you are a woman, it means you have to go to a well, carry your order on, uh, uh, on your head at a far distance. Then, boom, I'm, I'm in North America. Oh, my goodness. The streets, big streets, houses, everything else, food, like plenty of food. I grew up like eating not enough, not by choice, but I'm here. So, uh, after a year, what I, was, what I came from, it was done. And they told us, you guys, you have to go back home. I called my friends. Guys, I'm coming home. I said, what? Why are you coming? Why are you coming? Stay there. We have heard that, like in, uh, in America, you just plug dollars in a tree. So, there understanding for America is a country of opportunities, a country which has everything else. If I stay there, if I stay there, I will live better. Everything else will be fine with me. If I go back to my home country, a lot of diseases, hunger, problems, one after another. So that really scares me. Like, why should I live here and go there? But I had a call. I had a call to go back and do what I'm doing now. If I didn't go, I couldn't build two high schools. We couldn't manage to send hundreds of girls to school. If I didn't listen, I don't know where God is calling you. I don't know you. You may be scared. You may be afraid. But listen to what God is calling you. Every time uh, 
when I think of my call, I always tell people that if God doesn't show up, if God doesn't show up, I'm in trouble. Seriously, I'm in trouble. But God has been so faithful. God has been showing up. God has been taking care of me, my family. Last year in December, you guys, you blessed us with Christmas around the world. We had 1,000 kids celebrating Christmas. They had delicious food, uh, enjoying on the jumping cars, the thing that they have never seen. They know Jesus. They had to learn about Jesus, that Jesus lived. I don't know today where God is calling you. Listen and believe, because if it is our law, it's our law. And Paul is asking, the, uh, the, the, he keeps asking questions. Paul keeps asking questions. And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? Hallelujah. How can anyone preach unless they are sent? Who can send people? It's God. It's God. When you listen to his voice, when God calls you, he calls for a purpose. He's going to prepare you. He's going to give you courage. He will show you specific that you really need to do this. Ananias, he heard the voice and he said, you're going to wake, you're going to disciple Paul. No matter how strong he was, but that's the call. God's call is specific, is specific in our life, and we have to listen. So God sent his people to minister to his people, and he prepares us. Not only that, the church has also the law to send people. That's why in a church, you go through different uh, classes, and the church has to lay hands, pray for his ministers, and the church has to send. That's why this morning, like this church, has so many missionaries across the world. That's the responsibility of the church. That's the beauty of the living church. That's the church that believes in Jesus. It sent people. It sent his uh, believers. But that's also your church responsibility, you as parents, you as family, to reach out to your family, the kids, the family members, brothers. That's the importance of the church. God sent his people. The church has to send his people to minister, to reach out. Because if we take the word on our own and think that we can reach out. If we send ourselves, we can go and preach, but the word will be just void. But if we let God send us, his word will bear fruits. That's uh, in John chapter number 10, uh, Jesus was talking about a good shepherd. He hears his voice. John chapter number 10, Jesus talks about a good shepherd. If you are not a good shepherd, if you are not sent by God, people won't hear the voice from God Almighty. So, Paul, he keeps asking more questions. So, in chapter number 15, in, in verse number 15, where Paul is kind of conclude uh, his questions, and he say, and how can they preach unless they are sent? As it, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. It's very interesting. How beautiful are the feet who bring good news of salvation? I don't know if you think the way I look at it. When we talk about beauty, we live with what? 
Can we lift our beautiful feet? No. I have never heard somebody else like, oh, my goodness, your feet are beautiful. No. No, no, no. <laughs> so I was asking myself, like, Jesus, why? Why you lift uh, the feet? We, we remember uh, Jesus, he, he washed the feet uh, of his disciples to prepare them to go. Uh, even Jesus was once uh, anointed by the, uh, the most expensive perfume. But the analogy on this passage in Roman ancient, uh, when the people has gone to war, uh, what was happening uh, is that they could put a guard on a tower uh, to keep watching so that when uh, these people, they have gone to war, they need to send a message how the war is going. Are we doing well or no? So the guard on the tower could sit and watch as far, he, as far as he can see. So the messenger would come at a far distance with the horse, uh, running towards the village. So the guard could tell, they were trained to see if the horse is going at a slow speed, they would know that, no, that's bad message coming. But if the horse is coming in full speed and joyful, they could see that those uh, feet of the horse, the way they are learning, that's good news. That's good news. So even the messenger gets uh, to the village, this guard could uh, report. Good news is coming. It's the same. When maybe we get sick, we are feeling something else, we go to the hospital, and the, the doctor uh, is doing a uh, couple tests and he say, okay, wait, 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 wait. Uh, and or he say, okay, we're going to mirror you, your results. You wait anxiously. But when you, the doctor say, no, that's nothing, that's nothing. You, wear, uh, you wake up joyfully and say, oh, that's good news. That's good news. So Paul is bringing the same uh, concept. How beautiful. Uh, those who bring uh, good news to us, how beautiful it is. When we take the message of Jesus Christ, when we take courage and share the gospel to others, we bring good news to those that are distressed, to those that are fear, to those people that are going to hell. That, that's good news because we walk with our feet going in different places. We bring good news to people. That's what God is calling us. Let's take this good news to the world, to the people that have not reached with the gospel. That's our call. That's what Paul is wrestling uh, in these chapters. He's trying to teach us to take the gospel to the whole world. It's a law for you and me. I don't know this morning, where is God calling you? Is he calling you to share the gospel in your home? Is he calling you to share the message here? Or is he calling you to go to uh, places that they are war zone? I don't know. But this is what God is teaching us this morning to share the gospel. Greatness in the kingdom of God is based on services rather than being saved. We need to save others. That's what Paul is inspiring us this morning. We are on a spiritual journey of faith, and it is important that we have our spiritual feet pro uh, properly prepared and protected so that when we can go and take stand against the devil. That's our law. Our mission is to take the gospel of salvation wherever we go. We need to, to be ready to share our testimony, how we came to, to Jesus. May the good Lord who know how to bless his word bless this sharing. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, our dear Heavenly Father, 
for you have called us. Paul, this morning, has asked us all these challenging questions. How can the people believe in you? They can only believe if they have heard the gospel. How can we take the gospel? We can only take the gospel to the world unless Jesus send us. Lord Jesus, we ask you this morning to send your people to testify about your goodness to share the gospel to the masses. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.